it was my biggest uh, find that I didn't realize that uh, the number of uh, the percent of kids that were taking chemistry. So I'm glad the state instituted that requirement. Um, and social studies is three credits. Most of the kids are taking that anyways. Over 80 percent of our kids go on to some type of higher learning. And you know, a lot of kids were already taking those classes. Um, but I, we've also tweaked the mm -hmm. um, the requirements in some of the classes uh, that uh, students, you know, were taking that, you know, were considered uh, not as um, advanced as other classes. So I think that students coming into high school now and students coming in high school in the future are going to find that uh, there are more um, requirements of them in terms of uh, what they need to offer and what kind of education they'll receive. Well, as a former educator <laughs> myself, I certainly saw over time my experience was that if you set expectations by and large uh, students will meet those expectations yes. so don't lower the bar keep bringing it up but also being mindful that there are some special needs students mm -hmm. who may have sure. uh, some need some accommodations here and yep. there and I know that South Lyon does that all my school districts do that as as well yeah, we have some significant programs we've put in, uh, intervention module at the middle school, we have a math lab at the middle school to help out kids that are uh, needing more assistance um, in the core areas. Uh, we're going to do some of those things in the high school too as we uh, begin the new requirements. So we are always mindful of, you know, what can we do for the kids, what, what is it that, uh, you know, that, that we can help them with to be successful. I know that and that's very encouraging. You talked a little bit ago about how you communicate with within your communities, but there's another very important communication that we have. Um, the superintendents of Western Oakland County and the legislators, state reps and state senators, meet over at Oakland Tech School. What is that really called? Oakland, Oakland Technical Oakland. Center. Oakland Technical Center. Southwest. Southwest. Technical right over on Beck Road and we meet at least every six weeks mm -hmm. and we talk about educational issues mm -hmm. that allows for a free flow of communication between us finding out what you see as needs what we how we can respond as legislators that's been very productive over the now right. almost 11 years that mm -hmm. I've been in the legislature um, and I think that kind of communication is fairly unique among all of us here in Southeast Michigan. I'm not sure they do that everywhere else, but it keeps us in touch and it's very valuable. Yeah, and I want to personally thank you for basically attending every one of those meetings. Uh, you're one of the few that attends all of them, so that uh, uh, thank you for that. Well, again, I gain a lot of insight mm -hmm. And uh, the ver and I also have to say that you learn so much more when you can talk face to face and even over the phone. So thank you for that. And I, I definitely am very reinforced by going to these meetings. And I, I thank Brian Whiston of Oakland uh, Intermediate School District for bringing us all together. Sure. Um, recently, you made a decision that some people might have said, scratch their heads, why did Dr. Pearson keep schools open on one of those very cold, frigid days when almost every other school district decided to uh, keep the schools closed? I personally want to commend you for doing that because I know you didn't do it haphazardly. Why don't you tell us um, the process you went through in keeping the schools open so kids could get to school and not lose another day of instruction which is so valuable. How did you arrive at that decision? You took a little grief but sure. then again that's what it, well, that's what we call being a leader. Well we knew it, it was Monday and Tuesday that the two days that were you know very uh, cold uh, in terms of wind chill when uh, schools were mostly closed. But it didn't start on that Monday. I mean, everybody knew Friday that it was going to be very cold for a number of days. It started that weekend. So on Friday before we left, you know, we have spare buses. We made sure that there were buses in our garage in case some buses didn't start or wouldn't start. So that was one of the things we did. We had the mechanics come in early. They came in at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
to uh, see if the buses were um, going to be able to start. Um, and, you know, Monday morning, uh, most of our buses uh, started. We had a few that didn't, but most of them started. We had a few spares, like I said. Uh, we had no building problems. The wind chill was anywhere between 20 and 25 below. And that's one of the problems that we have when people ask me, or I have, when people ask me, well, you know, what, what, what number do you use? Well, you don't really use a specific number. In what mm -hmm. radio show, what TV, what website would you use? You know, and they give ranges. Mm -hmm. Was it very cold? Yes. Um, you know, I decided to keep Southline schools open. Four other districts were open also on that Monday. It was cold. Um, the next day, everybody in the Tri-County area was closed, and we, you know, we, I had to make that decision again. And I was up at 5 o'clock. I was at the bus garage at 5.15. Every bus had started already. They were already running. They were warming up. They were going to be uh, appropriate and, you know, and run on the roads. And uh, the schools, or we didn't have any problems at the schools. Um, and uh, well, we had two rooms at one of our middle schools. It wasn't even related to the temperature, but we had uh, made sure the kids were going to another room. So there weren't any problems. The, teen, the wind chill was uh, that morning, they were saying between uh, 15 to 19. So it was in the upper teens. And I frankly don't see that why we would close school with the wind chill in the upper teens. I don't think I'll close school again in the wind chill in the upper teens. So there are multiple factors though. Mm -hmm. The conditions of the mm -hmm. roads, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, the schools themselves, yes. the buses. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that, you know, we wouldn't close school but, uh, in the upper teens, but it depends if they, all the conditions are the same as they were on that Tuesday, uh, I would leave school open again. And um, I think it's the right call. So we'll have to see what other districts do. Part of it is that we were the only one open. And when you're the only one, well, Brighton was open from Livingston, but we were the only tri-county area school district open. So um, it was, uh, it was, you're right. I, I took some grief. I answered phone calls and emails all day long and um, met with the high school students that wanted some questions answered that day. And yes. uh, fortunately, we got through it. And uh, we'll, you know, it doesn't happen that often, no. but we'll see what happens in the future. Well, looking back at my <laughs> school career, I walked a mile and a half to school every day, rain, snow, whatever it was. And uh, I wanted to be in school. And I think most yeah. students do as well. They value the, the instruction time. and. Uh, this has been a, a difficult winter. It suddenly mm -hmm. became very difficult. We had a, we had it easy for quite a while. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully, we're out of the woods, and uh, a day of instruction, I think, is is really has a lot of merit. I, yeah. I'm glad that you, um, I guess, bit the bullet, so to speak. Yeah, bit the bullet. And I, you know, one of the things I, you know, I got criticized from a couple of people. Uh, when I mentioned that, you know, I, I, I knew that some of the parents would drive their kids to school or carpool a little bit. And so I, I kind of expected okay. that. We have 10% of our kids that are walkers. Sure. Um, so, you know, uh, parents do chip in. They do a nice job helping out. And, you know, like I said, everybody knew that it was going to be very, very cold those days. So. Well, I can tell you, you're doing great things in South Lyon. We're honored to have you with us. Thanks. And I want to thank you for being my guest. Sure. And uh, maybe we'll have to have you back again to talk about more of the wonderful things that are happening in South Lyon. My pleasure. And I want to just say to our viewers, we'll see you next month. This has been a wonderful uh, start to the new year. Thank you for watching.